Greetings, one and all. This is Harry Nick. This is Justin. How is Justin? I'm doing well. We've got points. We new have points. points. Lots and lots of new points. Uh, more than I thought. More than more, I thought. Lo- lots more than I thought, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um. This is a jackhammer points change, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. But no. like when we were making that video last week about what we think is going to happen, I thought, oh yeah, there's a couple of ships that are really yeah, struggling. Uh, like I was going, okay. Three ships from the Empire, maybe three ships from other factions. That'll, yeah. that'll be enough. Red line definitely up. Yeah. Um, like scum, broken stuff, definitely up. Yeah. Uh, the rest is uh, whatever. Yeah. No, 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 this is pretty yeah. serious. This is yeah. pretty serious. Also today, we got one more piece of information before we dive into these points. We got a new ruling on the rules um, sub forum on their on the FFG forum thing. The the, the part of the FFG forum where they um, do official rulings before they put them into FAQ. Rook Garnett and Han Solo no longer interact in the beneficial way that it currently does. You must shoot with Han Solo first, and then Rook Garnett enables the second shot, which must be out of a different arc. So you're no longer double tapping out the same arc with Dash anymore. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty happy about uh, that. I, uh, as an Empire player, I'm. Yeah, I, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Every time I bring this up, there's always people in the comments section saying, "Oh, don't worry, Nick. It's not taking tournaments." Blah blah blah. There are two factors when we're talking about any pilot or upgrade in X-wing: design and power. Power was not the issue. This was not taking tournaments left, right, and center. Design was the issue. Um, gunners are designed to not shoot out the same arc to us. Um, it's it's built into the claws of the card. Han Solo is written such a way that Han shoots, and then the next attack, which should happen after Han, doesn't come out the same arc. But there was a way to get around that with Raw Garnett. Mm. That was unintentional, or at least I'm very very certain that was unintentional. Yeah. Um, so look, I understand. Yes, it wasn't ultra powerful in wrecking things. But at the same time, even if it wasn't taking tournaments, I'm sure it was really oppressive on other lists in the lower tier of the tournaments. Mm. Like, I'm sure there are, like, Empire players who had not the best defense that is getting wrecked by it. And that doesn't feel oh, good. You well, know? I've rested a couple of times and I kept losing to it. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel good. I mean, mm. it's not all about the top tier of the tournament. And also, um, one of the big factors, apart, apart from design, apart from power level, is... Um, a positive play environment. It's hmm. not a positive um, feeling being up against that stuff. Yeah. A lot of the changes from first, second edition is about creating a more positive play environment. And that's Definitely. ultimately what it boils down to. So I think it was the right call to make. It sucks that, yes, there is a card that doesn't quite function exactly how it's written. Um, hopefully we'll get an official FAQ. Um, yeah. I think what they have to do now is just... just the last thing I'm going to say about it Every gunner now has the claws before or after. It doesn't matter. That gunner arc is only ever shot out once. Yeah. That is just how it has to be. Nothing gets broken in the future. And I will speak no more about it because I know a lot of you are sick and tired of hearing about it from me. Let's talk about these points changes. Yeah. We're going to go through this faction by faction, then go to the generics afterwards. We're going to start off with the Galactic Empire. Going alphabetically through all these yeah. ships. So first of all, the Alpha Class Star Wing. Two points. Two points across the board, yeah. plus an extra point on the new squadron pilot. Fantastic. Yep, very happy. Um, um, means that you can probably fly to Alpha Class Star Wings and something else. Yeah, quite easily, quite comfortably. Yeah. Um, you can fill the whole heap if you really want to, but you need to invest more points on torpedoes and stuff like that. Yeah. I think in this points band, it feels like the better option for ordnance, or at least that's what FFG are trying to push. Mm. Um, because, um, as we're going to see in a second, the Punisher and the Type Bomber have both gone up, yeah. um, and they're sort of better at doing either both or bombing or something like that. I think that's what FFG are trying to do. They're trying to make these a bit more streamlined. Mm. And look, it had no meta share, so I think that's probably fair enough. Uh, the TIE Advanced V1. An- Another two points. Just a subtle um, points decrease across yeah. here. Uh, negative two points on all the Force users. I mean, I don't really care about the Baron of the Empire. No, I don't, I don't think, think he's going to ever see play. I mean, look, if you really want to fly six of them, go nuts. But I think um, when we're looking at things, the Generic Inquisitor is the most interesting in terms of list building. Yeah. Um, it has lost its best Force option in Supernatural Reflexes, or at least it's not as viable. Have to play around with the points there. 
I think realistically with the Inquisitor, you're probably going to be more likely to put on some ordnance and put instinctive aim on maybe now. Yeah. Um, look, we'll talk more about force upgrades when we get to that part of the document. Yeah. Um, but it's really, there's no auto add. There's no obvious strong choice because of mm. what's happened to supernatural reflexes. Um, I really like this ship. I really want it to do well because I think it sits in a very unique design space. Um, generic force users on the Empire is going to be pretty dope. Yep. We have it on the Republic as well, but this is like all the dark side stuff so they can take things like hate and whatever dark side upgrades they have moving forward. Mm. TIE Advanced X1. Uh, negative I'm, five points on Vader. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> was not expecting that many points off him. No, because he's not seeing zero meta share. He's actually... Yeah. Um, cropping up every now and then. But, again, let's appreciate the fact that his best option has just oh, been yeah. majorly expensive. Supernatural Reflexes is almost three times the cost on him now. Yeah, it, it's nearly ha- half his points. And look, Supernatural Reflexes is incredible on Vader. It's incredible on any Initiative 6. Yeah. Um, that amount of flexibility. And I think Vader, working in an environment where he has just more generic value stuff. Mm. He's already amazing with three force tokens and that kind of thing. Yeah. Trying to balance him against like one really oppressive effect is probably a bit too problematic. So mm. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Yeah. I think now you're going to look more at hate on him. Maybe. Yeah. I'd like to look at hate on him. I'd like to look at like predictive shot and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, look, list building. It's, you know, we're getting into yeah. that. Um, when we get more submissions for the hangar bay, we're going to talk way more about him. Mm. Also love that all of these name have come down I think the Tire yeah. Advanced is a very interesting platform Marek Steel already interests me greatly at Initiative 5 with that really cool ability yep um, and I think trying to get him push him into the meta a bit more is good and I think it's a strong move I, I like the platform and I want to see it on the tail a bit more yep The Punisher Red Line up by 6 who didn't see this coming oh <laughs> yeah uh, um, I think it could have actually gone even more than 6 but uh, Everything that makes Redline incredible has also gone up, yeah. as well as him himself. That's fine. Hmm. Um, the Punisher is still a great option in terms of the versatile bombing and torpedo or bombing and missile. It can do the everything, hmm. um, but everything has got a bit more expensive, so nothing's like nothing's ultra streamlined to the point where it's just like, oh, Redline, Proton, and, and Fire Control. Whatever that generic yeah. Redline build is, it's not like the most obvious option now. I think the punish is still okay. I think a lot of people might just move to Death Rain now. Yeah, Death Rain seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. Seems decent. Uh, moving on, tight Defenders. A clean Ooh. two points across the board. Now, I did get the comment on a couple of videos recently saying uh, people were saying the only way to make this viable is to have it as a three of. No. I think... In first edition, that was a compromise on the design. Yeah. The TIE Defender is designed to be a ship which sits just above being a third of your list, ideally a bit below being half of it. Mm. It sits in a very weird point band, but it is very powerful for a small base ship. What, what I'd like to see eventually is two defenders and a, just a... Tie. I'm interested in the list building potential of this. I mean, there's nothing too much around it that really makes anything much more viable. It's only yeah. two points after all. Um, but it already saw a smidgen of meta play. Um, mm. I think Vessery is very interesting. Rex of Brath is... Yeah. I'm still going to fly my two TIE Defender list every so often when I'm wanting to have a bit of fun. Yep, for sure. Moving on, TIE Phantom... So Whisper and the Imdar pilot are a bit more expensive, so the frame, if you will, is a tad more expensive. Yeah. But the most significant thing here is it's lost the crew slot. Called it! Yeah. Um, it gains Gunner, uh, which is good. The only Gunner that it has any relevance with... Well, it actually has two, and let's have a quick look at them now because I don't have these things on the top <laughs> of my head. BT1, if you happen to have Vader in your squad, uh, you get like a Mangler Cannon effect where you can yeah. change your hit to a crit. That's pretty cool. And Fifth Brother, you still have access to a Force token if you want to invest in this. Fifth Brother has come down in points, and we'll get to that later on. But you can spend Force tokens to change uh, eyeballs to criticals. So it's like just a little bit more offensive capability on your Force tokens. You can all reap in to change a eyeball to a hit yeah. so it's only a, a tad more th- um, flexibility but it's nine points for the force token 
and a little bit more offensive capability. Yeah. I think that's in the conversation. Definitely. I don't think that's incredible, but um, I think when we were looking at Vader, I think the key thing there was the negative play experience. Mm. You get caught in Whisper's arc and you just feel like, well, I'm taking damage. And nobody likes that. Nobody likes guaranteed stuff. Um, mm. uh, yeah, it's just one of those psychological things which make you feel bad. The bummer. This is expensive now. <laughs> jo- Jonas has gone up by a huge amount. Yeah. Jo- well, he's the how runner of bombers. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it, it makes sense why. Um, everything else has gone up by two or four points. And perhaps in a world where red lines come down, suddenly people just jump directly onto the bomber and then that's equally as broken. It's probably something along the lines of FFG tested this all alongside each other and they found once red, once red line comes down, Jonas goes up. They had yeah. to bring it all down together. I like this because um, it's now only a smidgen cheaper than the Alpha Class Starwing. Mm. And the Alpha Class Starwing has um, the uh, configurations to make it work with cannons and torpedoes and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I think the bomber at the slightly cheaper rate is better with bombs. And I like oh, that there's definitely. clear roles for either of them. Yeah. Especially because the bomber has the curved ability to drop bombs and then with skilled bombardier going to two. With the curves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems I, I, decent. Yeah, yeah, I think the bomber's obviously going to stay as a bomber. That's good. Yeah. I, I think having more clear paths, especially when we have Alpha Glass Star Wings, Punishers, and Bombers, having them all in this amorphous Alpha Strike space where it just comes down to which one's the most efficient and that's the only one that sees play, mm. it's boring. We want everything having its own unique role. <laughs> Decimator. Yep, Ooh. it's a big ship. Now, uh, one of the things FFG said in the accompanying article to this is they want to make big ships competitive. Yeah. Uh, part of that is making the big ships themselves cheaper. And they've done that. Yep, they have done that indeed. Rear Admiral Sherinu, uh, Captain Oiken coming down by another six points. Mm. I still think Captain Oiken is the most interesting pilot on this. Yeah. Um, and I think FFG appreciate that too because it's given a, they've given him less of a points decrease. Mm. Um, he's still cheaper than Rear Admiral Shenru, so yeah, that seems yeah. really decent. Uh, look, I haven't played around with this too much in second no. edition. We both haven't. But uh, yeah, keen to see what this can do. I hope it sees a bit more meta play because it's a cool ship. Yeah. Um, uh, this was the ship that actually got me into the game, so... I mean, I, find, I found it a pain in the bum in first edition, yeah. but um, uh, to, from going from like really good and fun and playable but not too broken to just unplayable and dice to alpha strike blah 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 Mm. cool let's see if we can get it working and just some unique cards for the empire the crew options reductions on grand inquisitor grand moff tark and moff to jared seventh sister emperor palpatine and also in the gunner slot fifth brother Mm. uh which is all solid we were just talking about the commander archetype for the empire uh palp to jared and tark and tark and coming down by four points Uh, i mean he has the same problem as Moff to Jared is it's really powerful when it works mm. and I think you really have to negate a lot of the downside of the feel bads when it doesn't work by making it cheaper yeah so fair enough I mean Grand Moff Tarkin yeah when he doesn't work and give all like TIE Fighters or or was it Strikers we were looking at the other day? Yeah. Um, that doesn't work. It's not so bad if it's only six points. Yeah. Um, or if it works, it doesn't quite fire in all cylinders and you get like one target lock off. It feels all right. Yeah. Uh, getting Palp cheaper is good. I think FFG may have been a bit conservative with him to yeah. start off with because he was so dominant in first edition. But, you know, at this point in the meta, he's barely seeing play, so mm. making him a tad cheaper. I don't think... Two points is going to rock the boat with the meta with this, but um, yeah, yeah, seems solid. And yeah, fifth brother, we needed some kind of competitive option, N- not just for Whisper. I think this is just okay on Whisper, but specifically for the Decimator. Yeah. Uh, FFG want to have accessible force users for their big base ships. Um, it's one thing they can leverage over other ships, and this going on the Decimator, I feel, is very relevant. Mm. I don't know if nine points is exactly what it needs. I think it might need a bit more of a push, but, you know, baby yeah. steps, we're getting there. Um, the, mo- the main thing I care about in this points change is that the most oppressive elements come down and just chill out. <laughs> yeah. and, and we get a little bit of meta share with everything else going forward. 
Let us move on to the Rebel Alliance, starting with the ASF-01 B-Wing. It's cheaper. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know enough about it. No, me neither. It doesn't see much meta play. Um, it's really cool. I like the design of the B-Wing in 2nd Edition because Ooh. of its, you know, uh, one-speed talent rolls, its yeah. cool knife-fighting abilities. I often feel like looking at um, what people are doing with it in the list that are submitted, it just feels like um, an X-Wing that's not quite as good. Hmm. And then it's not quite as versatile. So bringing it down across the board feels like a solid idea to me. The attack shuttle. Sabine, Sabine is now more expensive than Ezra. Wasn't quite expecting that. No, we thought but it would be like random at the same or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. Look, Sabine's ability is dope. The way it interacts with, um, was it Debris Gambit or whatever yeah. it is. It, it's really good. It's Debris really Gambit good. and Duke. Was it it was um, an unexpected side yeah. effect of the new rules change with linked actions and whatever. It's not oppressive. It's not taking over the meta. But it's something that did need waiting in the points. Yeah. Um, so it's good that FFG caught that and did an adjustment there. The mm. Y-Wing. The BTLA 4 Y-Wing on the Rebellion yeah. has had a reduction across the board. One point for everything. And a few more points on the top end as well. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Dutch actually lost three. Dutch lost three points. Yeah. Um, which is cool. I like his um, versatility with target locks. But the main point here is actually the fact that also the veteran turret gunner came down in points as well. Yeah. Suddenly the Y-Wing lists that we're having a look at are way more versatile. Definitely. Um, actually, um, later this week, we're going to do the Hangar Bay video. You heard it here first. It's going to be on Y-Wings. Um, so we've got a lot of really cool stuff to talk about there. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can do a lot of stuff with a lot of different game strategy and that kind of stuff you can have like your turrets and your size oh oh turrets have gone down as well yeah i completely forgot yeah um so it's like it's not a huge impact to reduce these by one point it is a huge impact to reduce basically everything they can take though yeah um not so much on the scum faction we'll talk about that when we come to it um also it is worth pointing out um the rebellion and the scum were actually relatively at the same points despite mm. the fact the scum ones also had illicit slots yeah. so the scum ones while you can't really compare them because they're on different factions, different pilot abilities, they did just feel better. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this is probably fair enough. And they're not seeing all that much play. Um, I think Dutch and Horton Sum are coming up in the old list, but yeah, that's, that's really okay. K-Wing, three points across the board. Yeah. Feels, feels fair enough. Feels fair enough. Uh, a Siege to Ketu is still the most expensive it's good. Um, yeah. He popped up in the top four of the Oz Nats yeah. um, because of his pilot ability. But, uh, yeah, that's yeah. okay. It doesn't bother yeah. me at all. Um, it's He combos well with Garvin Drays. Yeah, you can use his focuses and There's, then spend them. And then and the focus jumps around here. It's, yeah. it's weird. But yeah. um, it's no, obviously powerful um, enough to occasionally do well. Yeah, my brother played it. It's... Not bad. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Seems fair. Mm. A-Wing down across the board. Corrin Horn down eight points. That's huge. That's pretty good for an ace. Yeah. Um, 66 points for his ability. Initiative five. Yeah. Seems yeah. all right. Yeah. Seems decent. Garvin Darklighter. Uh, G- Gavin. Gavin Darklighter, yes. Yeah. Uh, we'd still make Garvin Drays. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, my brother... Mainly played with Gavin. Um, yeah, and I like Gavin's ability. I feel hmm. like in first edition it wasn't relevant enough, but everything became a lot fairer moving into second, and Gavin seems pretty decent for yeah. what he does. Yeah, no, he's very good at the handshakes. Yep, for sure. I like him a lot, and I think seven points is fair enough considering that they're basically seeing Stone Cold nothing in terms of meta play. Mm. Although, although um, uh, Corrin Horn made it into the final of the system open that just happened in America. So oh, really? That player is going to be very happy. I wonder mm. if it was Nathan Need. I should check that. Um, yeah, cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. The Hawk. It's gone up yep. on both factions. Fair enough. Uh, Rourke, the most. So it's, that's a bit harsh considering he's lost the combo with Han, actually, if you think about it. Still though, it's though. still powerful. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, yeah. Also, we'll talk about and tick. Multi crow has gone up as well. Mm. Um, but the hawk was ultra efficient. It was seeing a little bit of meta play on the rebellion, seeing a whole lot of meta play on the scum faction. Yeah, it's reflective of where it's at. Yeah. And Kyle's only gone up by one point. I like Kyle a lot. Um, yeah. 
Uh, he passes uh, uh, off um, yeah. focus tokens focus. and that kind of stuff. Uh, Jan Ors, I still think, is worth looking at at 44 points. Yeah. I don't care that she's gone up by two points. Yeah, it just seems solid. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Over to the RZ1 AWIM. Reductions across the board and everyone gets a talent. Um, now, we were talking about this earlier. We, we felt that the RZ2... It's, uh, in the resistance, it feels more... It feels more resistance. Yeah. Um, I like two talents on resistance ships because they're really flashy and show-off-y. But then we had to think about it and then we realised, well, RZ1s can't take heroic. Yeah. And that's like, that's, that's like the really dope thing in my mind which makes the RZ2 really cool. RZ1s, um, I'm looking mainly at the Green Squadron pilot now with two talents, mm. uh, trick shot. Crack shot and cluster missiles as a five of that's it's pretty good. Um, in first edition, what we had snap, crackle, and pop a wings with um, snapshot and crack shot, mm. and it needed um, shardan refit so it couldn't take missiles. This is a, a similar ish power offense with missiles on top. Um, you're gonna feel good. That's interesting, it's a lot of power on the board, so yeah. I, I mean. At the end of the day, yes, only two red attack dice. But FFG are trying their darndest to find ways to make two red attack dice okay. Yeah. And, yeah, two talents helps a lot. There are a lot of good, cheap, offensive abilities. Oh, yeah. We'll talk I, about it in a tick. I don't think trick shot's bad at two points. No, <laughs> having trick shot on there means that you will occasionally have that third dice. Yeah, having crack shot means you'll occasionally just cancel results out of nowhere. Oh. Um, you can bullseye spam like the Vulture Droids will. Um yeah, I'm very interested in this. I'm very interested. Ooh. I already thought Jake Farrell was in an interesting spot. I think the main problem with Jake Farrell was the two red dice yeah. and not having great build arounds for that. But with two talents, making him pretty darn cheap. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see what happens. She the Pede, we have a point adjustment to the frame. So the two cheapest parts have come up by two points. Um, AP5 is still cheaper than Zeb. I don't know why that is. Zeb is useless. Yeah. Zeb should be cheaper, despite the fact there's a higher initiative. AP5's ability is fantastic. Um, but they've basically made this more expensive because you need a bigger buy in for coordinates. Mm. It's the same with this and the escape craft on the scum faction. So yeah. that's fair. The VCX come down across the board. Again, big ship. They yeah. want to make it more relevant. Um, being conservative with this one, the start of second edition was smart because it was. It, it, it was a thing. Oh, I hated it. But it mm. was. Playing around with double tapping TLTs in the first edition. Now yeah. it doesn't have anything as oppressive. It can only shoot what the primary backwards, matching the um, was it the attack dice of the ship it has docked. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean it can also take a turret. Yes, it can, but it's not double tapping with that turret. Yeah. That, that was a weird design. I always felt in first edition it should fire once with its own turret, then fire with the turret attached to the attack shuttle. That would make more sense. Even like thematically, it would make more sense. And yeah. it means you have to invest more to get double tapping TLTs. Mm. Um, yeah. Yep. Good. Very excited oh, to see this. VCX also gains a census. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know what that does <laughs> in terms of. Uh, no. Advanced sensors is good to put on it, but advanced sensors has gone up. Fire control is handy mm. on something that can fire twice, but it's not. Stupidly powerful. Mm. Also, we should mention, um, Kanan has had a larger points reduction than anyone else. Yeah. Um, they're putting a bit... They're making the buy-in for force points on large base ships a little bit less difficult to deal with. Mm. So, um, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah. Because force points, again, is one of the things that large base ships can leverage over other ships. Um, so that seems fair enough. Mm. Falcon! Yeah, Ooh. boy, here we go. Yeah, you're going to be flying them. Oh, I'm going to be flying them. Um, I don't, well, I don't fly them. Well, but, well, um, well, not this one, but... I'll fly them in yeah. resistance for sure. I mean, resistance didn't come down, but that's not the point. Um, Han Solo, negative 10 points. I, I was super hyped for this moving into second edition, and it just has struggled to see play. Yeah. In fact, a lot of things in the Rebellion have, I think because they sit so awkwardly, if they're not like... You know, Luke Wedge plus one, and they don't mm. fit into that very specific point band. They just don't see play. So, if we make the Falcon cheaper, suddenly it makes things like Falcon plus one really jacked up Luke or something. Like, 
Yeah. There are more options. It's going to encourage more list building. Um, and I think ultimately, yes, it's a large base ship and has all the problems associated with that in second edition. So I'm very happy to see this. Hmm. Lando at 80 points. Lando. I'm, seriously, guys, I, I'm still looking at Lando going, why hasn't somebody broken this yet? I, I love the list of um, Lando and Wedge together. Yeah, um, what was it, Lando and Luke we were looking at before the start of second yeah. edition because um, all that coordinating and interplay with those two guys. Mm. Um, in fact, now there's a big points gap in that because of all the points you've saved on Lando. Yeah. Um, yeah, seems awesome. Seems really, really cool. Still can't quite fly three of them. But that's probably for the best. Yep. Ah, the YT2400 light freighter. A two-point reduction on dash render. Who cares? Uh, yep. Lebo has lost the crew slot, though. This is probably the most significant thing yeah. here. Now, we were talking earlier. We reckon that's because C-3PO? Has also come down in points. Yeah. Uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, the interplay with C-3PO and Lebo... Uh, you got to appreciate what's going on here because it's easy to say, but Lebo had no problem with crew before. Um, what FFG are doing, at least what I hope FFG are doing, is they are adjusting the points and then testing that and then adjusting again and testing that. So they're going to be a bit extra cautious with extra things that come out. This has happened in the past with FAQs. They spoke about how, um, like, advanced slam on the K-Wing. Mm. They had to fix that and, like, the jump master at the same time. Otherwise, there was going to be problems and that kind of thing. So, yeah, Lebo and C-3PO, they didn't want to be a combo at that reduced buy-in. Um, that seems fair enough. Mm. It seems a bit odd because Lebo and Dash fly the same ship. So why does the same ship have two different um, loadouts? The answer, because. Because it's a tabletop game. Yeah. And we have to focus on getting that balance first. Moving down to our Astromechs. Our big, beefy Astromech boys that fix shields and hull have come down in cost, um, oh. which is cool. Yeah, didn't expect that. No. Um, um, that makes R2-D2 a really, really yeah. tantalising buy-in over the R2 Astromech. So it's only two points more on the regular R2 Astromech as opposed to four points more. Um, so your more high-priority targets like Wedge and Luke are going to want to seriously look at R2-D2, yeah. uh, which is good. Same with R5-D6. It's only a slightly smaller buy-in above the regular thingamajig. Mm. Moving down to the crew, we have reductions on Chopper, Baze, Malbus. Remember Baze, Malbus? He's awesome. <laughs> Let's raise his ability. So you can net a whole heap of focus tokens. Hmm. I forgot this was a thing. Well, you can only net two additional focus tokens. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean you know, having three, there's really um, not much point having any more than three no. for one round anyway. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Uh, in first edition, he was like a gunner that could make you shoot twice, but only at different targets. Mm. Um, he's been pretty useless in... Every iteration he's had so far, so fingers crossed something will happen here. Yeah. 3PO at 8 points feels really good. Um, Ooh, that's why yeah. Chop is cheaper. But also with the reduction on the Falcon, I'm very curious about what we can do with this. Ooh. He can't guess zero anymore, so you can't do the guaranteed evade thing anymore. Yeah. But he's still getting your two calculate tokens, and that's pretty cool. Ooh. Also, reductions on Chewbacca, Kanan Jarrus, Lando Ooh. Calrissian, Leia Organa, uh, Magnara. And sorry, we, we, sorry. Need, we need to talk about Leia. We need to backpedal on Leia. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, minus six points. She was originally eight, I now was, two. I was very interested with Leia at eight points. I am very, very interested with Leia at two yeah. points. Uh, Same problem as Imperial Commanders. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Mm. But at two points, that doesn't feel so bad. No. Um, I'm just trying to think, what would you put her on? U it's wings? B wings. I think is the most broken thing you can do with her because B wings have one speed talent rolls, yeah. and then it can make them all white at the same time. Ooh. That's kind of fun. Even if you just put her on the Falcon and fly her alongside Luke, it oh. it doesn't matter. The fact that the Falcon can do white S loops. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's great if Luke can do a white talent roll, or the Falcon can do a white S loop. That's the floor. For two points, <laughs> you have access to that consistently once a game mm. the roof is both of them do it multiple times that is well worth two points yeah i yeah yeah um falcon and luke let's revisit that mm. <laughs> let's revisit that i mean the really broken thing you do with her is you put her on a little carrier and then you fly alongside a heap of b-wings and they all do one speed talent rolls and 
I didn't feel good. Yeah. Um, like, seriously, I, I was thinking about that at eight points. I'm thinking, wow, you could do something here. Um, but two points is so cheap that you don't care when it doesn't work. And mm. that's why I'm looking at that going, wow, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. yeah. Lando Luke build's looking pretty good. Last thing on the Rebellion we have here is the Moldy Crow title, up by six points. Yeah, it's dumb, it's powerful. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I'm... I'm a big proponent of the Molly Crow title. I fly pale up on the scum faction. It's incredible. It's arguably a bit too efficient for what it does. It adds an extra arc for all those abilities. Mm. Every single named pilot on both factions for the Hawk cares about things being an arc. Not only that, it's a three dice primary out the front. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. And to be honest, I don't think it's going to stop it from seeing play. No. I think it's just that powerful. I don't think we're going to get the ultra-efficient uh, Paylob Boba plus one thing thing happening anymore. You're more, you're more relying on one of those, not the other kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think it's interesting. I still think it's powerful. Um, like your, um, your Hawk plus a big ship build on the Rebellion, your Jan Ors or your whatever, no longer Raw Garnet, but things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, it looks... It's fine. It's still very viable, wow. especially Jan- considering the big ships come down. Jan Ors... Mm. Moldy Crow, all of a sudden that big ship throwing out one extra dice. Yeah, you could do Lando, you could do Han, you could still do Dash. You yeah. can still fit that all in the in a list. It's still all doable. 